Welcome back to The Breakfast. Now moving on to talking uh, other issues with regards to COVID-19 still. Uh, Faisal Schweib, the executive director of uh, the National uh, Primary Healthcare Agency, um, has a healthcare development agency, I beg your pardon, has stated that the president, Muhammad Buhari, and vice president, uh, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, will be encouraged to, of course, take the COVID-19 vaccine on a live television broadcast. Um, it also, of course, uh, is uh, known that the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, has been one of the first or the first prominent Nigerian to receive the COVID-19 vaccine in the United Arab Emirates. We've invited uh, this morning in studio Dr. Tui Mibawondu uh, to join and uh, share his thoughts with us. Good morning, Doc. Thanks for stepping in. Good morning. We also have uh, virtually uh, Dr. Augustine Ekbe joining us. Thanks also for your time. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Meba Ondu. The, the, you know, it's not the first time that we're hearing of something like this in the last few months. Uh, we've also seen other world leaders uh, take the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, so I want to start your thoughts on how this might help and it might you know, encourage other Nigerians to take the vaccine. Um, is it a good move by the Nigerian government? Well, um, I, th I think honestly, people are uh, putting a lot of emphasis on photo ops. Now, um, let's be frank. Let's look at Nigeria. There's been a, quite a lot of distrust between the government and the governed. Besides that, there's a lot of issues and rumors concerning the COVID, disinformation about the vaccines, and a lot of doubts. Now, what I was expecting from government, essentially, is to deepen communication to target, especially those, those the vaccine hesitants and anti-vaxxers, people that will say that, listen, I'm not going to take your vaccine because of this and this and that, okay? Now, if you give the, um, the, 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 the top government, maybe rightly so for the photo ops, you know, people might even be doubting what you are giving them. You don't know that, you see, I, I think when we chip on things, you know, we, we, we don't get the desired results. But because huge numbers of the um, religious group and religious leaders are against this vaccine. For me, I would prefer that you convince those people and give them those vaccines instead of considering giving uh, Shivaji or giving Buhari first. Now, the second aspect of it, you want to deploy vaccines. Okay, we say we are going to get 100,000 doses at the end of this month. That is just, just for 50,000 people. Okay? Now, you have not told us exactly the strategic way you want to deploy these vaccines to be that effective. Now, 50,000 doses of vaccines, how many people can you reach? Now, you are, are you putting the dynamics of the places where we are having this large number of positive cases and deaths in, of COVID-19? Lagos, um, FCT, Kaduna, and Plato. These four states account for more than 70% of the cases of COVID vaccine. I think we must be able to apply some simple science to deploying the vaccine. It's not just for two options saying that, listen, Oshiba, you take, uh, M. Buhari take. Uh, uh, so you're basically that saying that the federal government should give these vaccines to people, to leaders that the people trust, like their, you know, their religious leaders, their traditional leaders, to prove to them that the vaccine works. You, you, you know why that is important? Because most of the opposition against the COVID and even the vaccines are coming from there. Okay, that will be more symbolic. So when you win them okay. over, yes, you yeah, win the people. More, it, yeah, more symbolic than you saying that. All right. is, uh, Let, let's good. bring in uh, Dr. Augustine Ekbe. Um, you know, Dr. Tui Mebawondo has described it as uh, photo ops, which are not as effective as uh, should be. Do you agree that this, you know, is just a, you know, like he described it, a photo op, and more should be done with regards to public orientation and, you know, um, getting more people to understand uh, the situation we're dealing with? Yeah, thank you for having me again. Uh, I agree with him in, in regards to the fact that he thinks that it's photo op and all of that. And we know how the Nigerian government is and how things work in Nigeria. But in addition to that, I, I want to um, slightly deviate from his thoughts because I know that there are some people who trust the government, even though um, a large chunk of people, of course, do not trust the government. And for those who trust the, trust the government, having the president and the vice president take the vaccine in open would be a plus in my opinion. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, to add again to what he said with regards to, um, you know, bringing in religious leaders and all of that, I agree with that because, like he pointed out, most of the um, arguments against vaccination and all the conspiracy theories have been propagated mainly by religious leaders, as we all know, and, uh, you know, moved on on social media very widely and randomly, so much so that even though some of us are not in Nigeria, it almost feels like we're in Nigeria in terms of the theories and things like that. You find people who are educated, people who are not in Nigeria, who are medical doctors, frontline workers in the UK, for example, and then they are holding on to some of the theories back home because of their pastors and all of that. So yeah, for me, in summary, it's a two-pronged approach. Let's get the president and the vice president come on air, take the vaccines, those who trust them will, you know, go for it, and then let's also use the the other approach of getting to religious leaders and all of that, yeah. Hmm. Dr. Augustine, you work in the UK uh, and you're, you're a frontline worker basically dealing with, you know, COVID cases on a daily basis. First of all, have you received the COVID-19 vaccine? That's one. And how will you uh, experience or basically explain your experience working with COVID-19 cases in the UK? Yeah, I'm glad to say that um, I'm booked to get the COVID vaccine on Monday morning. I deferred it because I thought some people needed it more than myself. But since um, millions of people have started getting it and there are some slots available, I've accepted to take mine on, on Monday morning. So yes, I'll be getting mine on Monday. In terms of the experience, I, I just want to use this opportunity to tell Nigerians in particular and other African people in Africa watching that the COVID vaccine, um, COVID-19 is real. People suffer from this condition and people die from this condition. And we have seen people die from this condition. And so, you know, people should take it seriously, undertake those activities that have been told them that helps prevent um, um, getting the infection. For example, social distancing, wearing your face mask and things like that. These would help reduce the risk of getting the infection because the thing is even if you don't fall sick of the infection of the COVID-19 infection you can make other people fall sick and the outcome might not be friendly it could be fatal literally yeah all right back to Dr. Mabondo the the you know something you already started talking about and that is the um, inadequacy of just 100,000 vaccines uh, which is you like you said 50,000 doses um, why do you think you know, the number is that small? Is, is it, you know, because we haven't been able to afford more vaccines um, or this is just a test uh, for now? Um, again, even countries that actually have the money to procure the vaccines, they have limitations. America, just barely 100 million doses. Even that 100 million doses, their target, they've not even been able to achieve a million vaccination. It's a complex thing. So there's a money aspect of it, there's a production aspect of the vaccine. And the fact that you see, the vaccine is, under, is approved under emergency use authorization, okay? So the whole phase, the unfolding of the, of the vaccination is not really open to us because we've not studied it for such a long time. So there's, initially, we knew that it's going to be a huge challenge because there's this vaccine disparity. You know, when a new technology or a new thing is developed, the big countries... You know, the rich country takes those things first and start figuring out how it's going to get to us, okay? Now, um, uh, WHO and some group, they, they put on what they call COVAX, you know, uh, WHO, uh, Global Alliance of Vaccine Initiative, and CEPI, okay? They put up the group and some donors. Okay, wait a minute. There's going to be a challenge in this developing world. What then do we do? So, with the, with the party money they could get, they say, okay, yeah, okay, we're going to give you, for Nigeria, 100,000 vaccine. Now, it's not, just, it's not vaccine. It's not vaccine that prevents disease or COVID. It's vaccination. You see, once you've not, got it, once you've not moved from vaccine to vaccination, you've not done anything. You can as well have 100,000 or 1 million or 10 million vaccine doses in Nigeria and not achieve vaccination. So the critical discussion that Nigeria should be engaged in, in now is that how do we move from vaccine to, to vaccination. vaccination? So it's key. If we don't do that, it, it will be like every other vaccine that has landed in Nigeria. Polio, we have to look for support everywhere to get it to be, get it to eradicate it. Yellow fever, the same thing. Everything the same. We have to look yeah. for. And of course, more than 170 um, vaccines under development, various all over the world. Okay, where is Nigeria 
what is, which one is Nigeria developing? Indeed. Dr. Augustine, you are in a country where 1.3 million people have received the COVID-19 vaccine uh, that's uh, in the UK. But it's a different ball game in Nigeria. And let's talk about production. 7.8 billion people worldwide, globally. That's according to stats for January 2021. Do you think Pfizer, we're talking AstraZeneca, and the rest of you know the other bodies that have created vaccines can make up to 7.8 billion to vaccinate the entire world? Do you think that's a, that's yeah. a possibility? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, the thing is, the Pfizer vaccine is an mRNA vaccine. And one of the advantages of an mRNA vaccine is that you can do large-scale production in a short time compared to tra traditional vaccines and all that. So if it's reaching 7.8 billion people, yeah, I think it's possible. It might take a while, definitely, but it's possible. But the real question is, will Pfizer want to give their vaccine to Nigeria? Does Nigeria have the money to buy this vaccine? Because you must understand that while there is the health component, there is the economic component. Big pharma companies want to cash out from this whole thing, and they are cashing out indeed. As you know very well, most of the developed countries have paid you know, millions of pounds and dollars, depending on whatever currency they use, to get these vaccines. Can Nigeria pay for these vaccines? You see, we're already with, depending on handouts, 100,000 vaccines. And like um, Dr. Mebabuni said, that's two doses. If, if, if 50,000 people take two doses, that is, that is finished. So 50,000 people out of a population of 200 million people. And then he raised the critical issue of vaccination. We know the Nigerian factor, where they would leave the vaccines in a storehouse. Vaccines that should be within certain temperature range will be left there without power supply, without anything. Somebody might want to donate it to his village people, even when it is expired. You know, these are the issues in, in, in Nigeria. Yeah. That was actually hilarious. But critical <laughs> issues there, to be Dr. honest. Dr. Tui, I want to <laughs> I want to bring up more of the Nigerian factors here. <laughs> the one of the things that we spoke about earlier was the you know we, we've seen that private labs currently are charging uh, fifty thousand naira plus uh, to get a COVID nineteen test. Um, eventually, of course, the Nigerian government you know has stated that they plan to vaccinate uh, as you know for much as forty percent of the population. In there is a time frame, I think about a year or two years. Um, do you think that that same Nigerian factor can be avoided um, so that we can, whenever ever we are able to afford these vaccines in the country, or maybe we are given you know by um, international NGOs, uh, we would be able to get the poorest of the poor Nigerians to afford these vaccines or to get them for free. It's certainly a huge issue. Um, health must fulfill, a proper health must fulfill some criteria. You know, it must not be discriminatory, accessibility, equality. There are a lot of factors, you know, in such a way that no matter where you stay, your level of income, your state of physicality, you must be able to assess the best health that's available to the richest man. That is the concept of uh, universal health coverage. But uh, look at Nigeria. Even ordinary COVID vaccine to test, test, COVID test is being um, manipulated, is being corrupted. Now, you know what? Imagine what will happen to vaccine. Now, our discussion exactly should be actually be you know, how do we now get this vaccine to meet those criteria, and not whether uh, uh, Vice President took it or uh, President will take it. Yes. I mean, I don't. So, tell you what. When the vaccine gets there for that 50,000 50, people, um, like uh, Dr. Augustine mentioned, people will put politics into it. Ah, uh, no, it, it was the geopolitical zone. People will put connection to it. The vaccine will not be available. You have to bribe somebody. Look at NIN, or NIN, NIN. You have to look for 5,000, 3,000, 15,000, depending on where you are, to get NIN. So what do you think? Because, again, there, there, there's a huge law of demand and supply. There's economics and the business side of all these things. The law of demand and supply says that I have 50,000 people I want to give this thing to. And in a population of 200 million, we are not going to get nothing done. And then let's don't forget that if you want to achieve that herd immunity that will protect the large number of population, you need about 70% coverage of the vaccine. Okay? So the, the truth, let me, you know, I don't refer to Dr. Augustine again. The truth is this. What we need to do, honestly, is to focus on those non-pharmaceutical interventions. If we have $300 billion to spend, let us spend as much as $250 billion on those non-pharmaceutical interventions 
to deepen those non-pharmaceutical intervention. That is exactly what can save Nigeria as it is. Trying to deploy vaccines, minus 70, look at uh, the, 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 the Pfizer one, minus, minus um, 70 degrees centigrade. Where are you going to get that in this kind of place? You know? And then look at the condition of storing those vaccines for it to be effective. Do you want to give Pfizer that is not going to be effective? And then the other aspect of it is that you need that close monitoring because a, a, any medication under emergency use authorization needs a close monitoring to follow up on side effects. Mm. Okay, you need that to happen. What have you put in place to ensure that close monitoring? Should there be any undesirable effect? What are you going to do? Because in human mind will amplify those. If it's one single negativity in hundred thousand, the one that single one will be amplified and will be used to justify. The, the, the doubters, you know, the conspiracy yeah. theories. Yes. So it is key for us to look at how to move from vaccine to vaccination. To vaccination. Yes, Dr. Augustine, let me bring you in here to ask a question that is, you know, bugging the minds of Nigerians. There's been so much talks about vaccine, vaccination, production of vaccines and all of that. But some, you know, m medical journals and papers, you know, in, my course of, in the course of my research, have, have been trying to find out, will the COVID-19 vaccine ever go away? And there's a very unlikely chance of that, according to what I've read. You're a doctor. There's so many vaccine, you know, preventable diseases. You know, there's, there's typhoid, there's, uh, uh, there's uh, measles and the rest of them. Do you, think, do you think that coronavirus would be one of those diseases that would never go away? Uh, in theory, I do not have an answer to that question because there are a number of factors that affect whether or not diseases eventually go away. And truly, in history, we found, we, we've realized that only a few diseases have actually gone away. Most diseases, as you have mentioned in your remarks, even though there are vaccines for them, they are still with us. So that's, that's, that's the thing. Sorry. Sorry. Are you there? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. So, so most most um, vaccine diseases, even though there are vaccines for them, they are still there. And then, you know, un unfortunately, they have not gone away. So it's a difficult question. But personally, I, I do think that this coronavirus might not go away, you know, because it's, it's gone far. Over 78 million people have been infected with this condition. We have people, especially in, in Africa and in other poor parts of the world, where issues like social distancing, even though it would be cost effective and would be more productive in those areas, they can undertake it. For example, in Nigeria, most people have to go out daily. They have to go to the market. They have to help people in the market, more or less, to be able to buy and sell. Uh, do they have hand washing facilities? Do they, do they even have good drinking water? Not to talk of um, water to wash their hands and things like that. Hand sanitizers. How many people can truly bring that money to say, I want to sanitize my hand and things like that? So I do not really think this thing will go away, in my personal opinion. But then in theory, we never really can tell. I mean, who knows? All right. Um, um, one last one for Dr. Augustine Ekpe. You, of course, uh, live in a country where um, millions of people have already been vaccinated. I, I want your thoughts on, or I want you, you know, quickly share with us very, very briefly, what steps, you know, had to be put in place to ensure that, you know, number of vaccinations uh, go through so fast, um, even if, yes, there's still a lot more that needs to be done. And what are those steps that were put in place to ensure that it was, you know, done so quickly and uh, that Nigeria maybe might learn from? So the thing is, I live in a place where there are systems, systems that have been on for a long time, proven systems. There are mechanisms through which people can, you know, say, for example, vaccines, send vaccines. There are apps, for example, that we can book for um, our vaccinations and things like that. Which, which is not the case in Nigeria, as we all know. We don't have systems in Nigeria that work and things like that, so it will be very difficult. I also want to quickly raise um, at this point that it's not just about vaccination. Um, there is what is called the threshold, the herd immunity threshold, which is the percentage of the population that has to be vaccinated for a vaccine, vaccination program to be effective. So it's not just about giving 50,000 people vaccine and we say we are vaccinated. It's not just a social event. There are scientific undertones. There are standards that have to be met. And this varies from disease to disease. For the COVID, nobody is definitely sure, but the guess is around 70, 75% here and there. But nobody knows for sure because nobody has achieved herd immunity yet. So 
You see, Nigeria is, is, still, is still a very tricky one because first we, we, we think about the economics. Do we have the money to buy to get the vaccines? If we do get it, can we vaccinate at least 70% of 200 million people? So it's really a difficult question to so, answer. Uh, to it's, a lot, it's a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, we'd like to thank you. Uh, Dr. Augustin Ekbe for your time this morning. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you. Um, and, you know, I don't know if I could also ask, you know, when you're coming back to, you know, serve, you know, your country and work in, <laughs> you know, El Luth or, you know, any I of really, these hospitals I really here, doubt would, you, that. would you be willing to come back and help us out here <laughs> with the experience that you've had? <laughs> Yeah, I worked in Nigeria before I left, so yeah, I did work in Nigeria for a couple of years before I left. We yeah. miss you. Come back, please. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Thank Dr. you Mama very Wandu. much. Thank you very and much thank for your you time. thank you too, Dr. Tui. Yes, my pleasure. Uh, again, uh, it's very important that um, we need to communicate this, this vaccine properly. All these uh, fake theories about uh, CCCs, Antichrist, if people understand what vaccine is, they know that, is, where, are you, are you going to, where are you going to put number in vaccines? Either you use a weakened virus or a dead virus to stimulate your immune system, or you use the mRNA. mRNA is like a messenger. If you send a messenger here to say, drop this particle and go away, you drop it and go away. mRNA stimulates the body and say, produce antibodies for this. And then it goes away from the body. That's the same thing. Or you use what we call a small part of the virus, you know, to stimulate. But okay. what we're doing now is mostly mRNA, uh, you know, and reduce a uh, 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 weakened virus, essentially. So if we understand this dynamics, all these lies about vaccine, antichrist, this and that, what new world order will probably vanish. Thank you very much, Dr. Tsui, for your time. We really appreciate you coming into the studio this morning. And yes, just to watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, where we've been talking all things COVID-19 vaccines and more big issues up ahead. Do stay with us.